Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's movie time, and it's one that a lot of you guys are going to be excited for. Which is this, Dan? Dune Part 2. Yes. I'm excited to see where this concludes. Me too. So, and I know a lot of you guys have been asking for it. Here it is, guys. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. And fam, just so you know, we're not drinking alcohol while watching this. We're drinking water. Because water is life. Water is life. The battle for Arrakis took everyone by surprise. And the Emperor said, nothing. His inaction is difficult for me to accept. Oh, it's not inaction. He did this. He was part of it, yeah. Here! Good army. Scala, that is humongous. Tis not the end, only the beginning. In this story, hell yeah it is. Oh, what a shot. The idiots are taking the bait. She knows this is a trap. Oh, they activate a thumper. I'm gonna take it the easy way. Oh, cool. That just happens so easily. It's seamless. Yeah, I like it. Oh, that looks so much like Lynch's Dune right now. Oh. No, you're not okay. They didn't even see it. You couldn't even hear it. Hey, it's raining in. Oh, God. <laughs> Damn Fremen are no joke, man. Good work. I'll take it, man. That'll work, too. Yeah. Not as elegant, but it works. I'm taking you somewhere they will never find us. After we harvest their water. <laughs> I love it. Waste not, want not. No. I think it's proper that they don't even respect their water enough to drink. <laughs> they use it for cooling systems. That's <laughs> perfect for the Harkonnens. Right. I'd be Nothing like a natural cleaning system. Mm -hmm. We're losing men. The rats. The ice stretch gets some rust. <laughs> what a little boy you are. Right? You can tell that guy's afraid of him, though. Some believe, some don't. It's a very divided crowd. It is. I suppose that's realistic. Look how your Bene Gesserit propaganda is taking root. If they follow me, we can disrupt spice production. The father didn't believe in revenge. His father's also dead, so... But I think at this point it's about survival as much as revenge, too. Hmm. There's one of the prophecies he had in the tent. He saw people worshipping at the skull of his father. Mm. Mm. Doesn't any water go to waste. Oh, that is so much part of their faith. They have tons of water. Sure do. 38 million decaliters. At least an guy it will change the face of Arrakis. He will bring back a green paradise. Oh, this is all part of the prophecy here. Our reverend mother is dying. You want me to take her place? Yes. Make yourself useful. I said they're looking for an excuse to get rid of you. Yeah, she'd been holding on for dear life to <laughs> wait yeah. for somebody else. You don't believe in all this? No, we don't. These are all Southern beliefs. What'll happen to my mother? <laughs> it's like no respect. This guy killed Jamis. Y'all need to have some respect. What is it? Drink. That is the bile of an immature worm. <laughs> The things you do to stay alive. If she survives. And it's going right into the fetus. Yep. <gasps> Nobody thought to ask that. To be fair, she didn't offer the information. <laughs> it's no miracle. Poison transmutation is something advanced Bene Gesserit can do. Yes, absolutely it is. You should know the people you're with. You had Bene Gesserit here from the start, so you should definitely know that. That's some interesting logic. You just want him to be Lisan Agaib. Yeah. She talks to me. She believes in you. What? 
Uh, she's a fetus. Only one step remains, and you will become the Kwisatzatlak. You must drink the water of life. She must have seen something. Well, she did inherit, what, centuries of pain and knowledge? Yeah. I want you to cross that small erg and come back. Travel by night. Goodbye. <laughs> Anything else I should know? Uh, beside the worms, centipedes are very nasty. Not the big ones, but the little ones. There's the little ones? Did he do that to describe yes. the little one? And the bigger ones are harmless? My brother's over there. Me nazio deji. Yeah, he was raised as a decent person. But can he survive in a desert by himself? Sand walk like a drunk lizard. <laughs> <laughs> you have to break up your rhythm. Now, that's interesting, because in the film books I've studied, the anthropologists say in order to properly sandwalk, you actually have to... <laughs> you want to listen to the books or somebody that actually lives here? Right. If we want to protect your brother, we need all the Fremen to believe in the prophecy. We need to start with the weaker ones. Oh, that's so weird. It's creepy. I don't remember him, her having conversations with her fetus from the books. <laughs> I... Aw, little Mahdi. No. <laughs> Waiting for the Harkonnen crawlers. All right, that's our first up close look at the giant tick looking thing. It looks like a tick too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guys just walk in there and take them down. They still have air power. They're just mowing y'all down. Yeah, boys, damn tr well trained here. Mm hmm. Oh. Oh. oh! Nice! On my signal. Be ready. Oh, he's gonna be him, use himself as bait. Oh, there you go. Well, that was close. They almost got the shield back up. There we go. Nice. That was fun. It's great effects, too. Yeah. You've been fighting the Harkonnens for decades. My family's been fighting them for centuries. I know everything about them. You know everything about the desert. You couldn't be more mutually beneficial to each other if you tried. Shall be known among us as Usul. Yep. Needs a war name. How do you call the, uh, the small desert mouse again? Wadib. <laughs> Wadib. <laughs> Wadib is wise in the ways of the desert. Yes, he is. The constellation that points to the north star we call Wadib, the one who points the way. That's very pro <laughs> prophecy driven there. That's very convenient. Yeah. Call Wadib Usul. See him give some of his water there mm -hmm. for like an anointment. Woo, look at this guy! Hey! Still go! <laughs> exactly, a cowabunga. <laughs> What's your secret name? Sihaya. What does that mean? It means desert spring. Mm hmm. I love it. I hate it. It's from some stupid prophecy. I prefer Johnny. Everything's from a prophecy. <laughs> Here, we're equal. What we do, we do for the benefit of all. Sounds very communist. Like. <laughs> 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 saying. Maybe you could be Fremen. Maybe I'll show you the way. I thought they would get to this point a lot quicker, honestly. But I'll take it. I'm not surprised if they do follow a communist doctrine, though. I mean, they're living in a very harsh environment where there's no water. You really have to cooperate to survive. Yes. Yeah. Freedom takes on a whole different meaning out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. No spice production for you. Nope. Not on our watch. There you go. Take Kill them before they even land. hit the ground. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That's the Baron, of course. Your orders were to restore spice production to full capacity. Good lord. Tighten your grip, Robin, or feel mine on your neck. Mm. What's with that weird bath? It's just an opulent spice oil bath. I don't know what it is, actually. Some disgusting crap that Talalax who gave him. I don't know. It's been a while since you've had one of those nightmares. I'm in the south, and it triggers a holy war. 
Millions of people starving to death because of me. That would happen if it was war anyway. True. That's got to be a disturbing vision. Yeah. Here. Thanks. Don't try to impress anyone. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Hopping on a worm is fancy. <laughs> I'm just saying. Shai Hulu decides today if you become Fremen. Or if you die. Well, have fun. <laughs> try not to die. That's what, your, that's what your mom said. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait for this part. Is that the war? Yes, <laughs> the size of a mountain. Rishi, so <laughs> well, who can? How can he control that? <laughs> Sounded like an earthquake coming right at him. Oh, there's no effing way. There you go, you gotta expose some flesh. Oh! It's like he's just like sailing on that thing, you know? Mm-hmm. I'll be damned if he did it. Yep. I shouldn't be surprised, but I always am. <laughs> I know, that's freaking awesome. That's right for Disneyland Sheesh. right there. <laughs> and just going through sand. Probably the biggest worm they've ever seen. Part of the prophecy, too, is when he does this his first time, he's calling a grandfather worm, you know? That's a fantastic shot. Look at the CGI here. Mm hmm. You can't decipher it. I'll say they're making the, making the most of those sand effects. Yes, he did. Look at her. Where the propaganda. That's exactly what she's been doing here. Now we go south. There are millions of fundamentalists there. The Kwisatz Haderach will be born. I think I prefer the non-fundamentalist. <laughs> <laughs> a little easier to accept? Yeah. As long as I breathe. May I worship you now. We have a Bene Gesserit among us. Fanning the flames of your legend, saying you're the one. And he can't see the future. Yeah. You thought you were worried about him inheriting too much power before? This is... <laughs> this is real power. Yeah, this is ridiculous. And you're in the only known part of the universe that has spice? She says you should be coming with us. No, I can't. Because I must continue fighting in the north to protect you down there in the south. She says she can tell when you lie. She's a fetus. <laughs> she says you're blinded by love. And she reminds you that you must reserve your hand for the most strategic alliance. What? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> she can't even speak. What your people did to this world is heartbreaking. We gave them something to hope for. That's not hope! I'll be waiting for you. All of us. This is the part of him they're trying to kill. That's why they want him to go south. So they can make him drink that water and kill this part of him. It's like, yeah, we got no use for him. We want the fundamentalists. Right. People who are level-headed questions things. People who are fundamentalists just do what you say and you get more done, exactly. unfortunately. Yeah. And he's having all these visions. I don't want to know what it's going to be like when he's like that with those visions. Right. If his vision comes true, it could be awful for everybody. Yeah. Not anymore. Formerly Spice Depot over here. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love it when it pisses them off. How much? We lost 80% of our last crop. Oh. oh no. You guys are becoming less and less scary as they get more and more victories. Yeah, even with all your tech, you can't seem to beat these guys. No. Life Delta Delta Delta. I've lost them. Jeez. Yes, my lord. On. You have like no strategic brain in your head. These guys are so far up your ass they can taste your lunch. Oh god. What deep? <laughs> You're shooting your own guys. <laughs> Just, come on, guys. <laughs> you guys don't stand a chance. Uh huh. That's what I thought. 
They didn't even wake Stilgar up for this one. <laughs> it was a massacre. It's not even a fight. I know, it's pretty pathetic on their parts, isn't it? It's incredible. All the air superiority you have, and you're woefully outmatched. <laughs> what deep? How would you deal with this prophet? You can't use direct force. Repression only makes a religion flourish. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Let the conflict on Arrakis turn into war. You then bring peace. You'd be a formidable empress. She is a, a very smart one, isn't she? Mm -hmm. What if all the treaties were still alive? Enough! Should the great houses learn that your father was behind the liquidation of the Atreides, your father will face war. Then what hope is there? We are Bene Gesserit. We don't hope. We plan. Mm. The Baron's youngest nephew, Fade Rother Harkonnen, he may be the answer. The guy is a psychopath. He's psychotic. Yeah. That's irrelevant. Yeah. The question is, can we control him? Your attempts to control things have led to this situation. That's what's pissing them off is because they're not in control of this one, but yeah. they caused it to happen anyway. And there's, that's got to be him. Blades, the Baron Fade, Rother. Oh. Oh, I can see the cuts. Well, it works. Jeez. Oh my god. Why would anybody serve these guys? Come. Kill me now. No drug for you today, Atreides. Oh, I remember him. He was part of the Atreides army on, uh, on Arrakis. Is he really beloved, or is this all fright? If you know what's good for you. Yeah. Does it remind you of the pod race on... In uh, oh, Phantom, Phantom Menace, Menace yeah. <laughs> Job of the Hut coming yeah. out here. Give me a mask, it sounds like the guys from the Padre. Right? It's a very monochromatic society. Yeah. The lighting here, it's because they got a black sun. A long way to come just to watch our prospect risk his life, Lady Fenring. Lady Fenring. What the heck is that? fireworks but they look very liquid liquid so liquid works yeah <laughs> kind of cool looking that slave isn't drugged you should cancel the fight don't spoil my nephew's birthday this is his birthday That's this is crazy. intentional yeah yeah he was toying with you there's no honor in this these guys are drugged i hope it's a costume and not what they actually look like it could be <laughs> Hey! You're interfering. I see he's enjoying himself. Yeah, he is. Yeah, you did. It was a good fight. Imagine if those guys weren't drugged. He probably would have died. It could have been real interesting. I have another gift for you, Arrakis. He's done with uh, Raban. Free the spies. I'll make you emperor. Scary yeah. thought. I love the lighting in this shot. You're following me. I'm Lady Margot Fenring. You're not allowed in this section. How did you get past the guards? She's been a Jezzer. <laughs> She's already messing with your head. Mm hmm. You've been a Jezzer. <laughs> and what makes you say that? I know you've been a Jezzer, Tricks. So you might know that Tricks doesn't mean you're immune to them. Mm hmm. She's got her own unique voice. She's got him in the palm of her hand. Put your right hand in the box. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He yearns to be hurt. He loves pain. He can be controlled. <laughs> I doubt that. He's sexually vulnerable. And? The bloodline is secured. Mm. True Bene Gesserit at, at, at their work there. Yep. What happened between him and his mother? He murdered her. Mm -hmm. Yep. That looked more like a kiss, uh, a kiss of death going back to him. In a way, it probably is. Yeah. I love, I love these shots on uh, Giddy Prime. Mm -hmm. They're incredible. It's a distinct look. The still suit. It's full of piss. <laughs> it's Gurney! <laughs> Little black market spice mining. 
You sure? Hey man, spice is spice, no matter how you get it. It's like the Harkonnens are doing a good job. Mine! Mine! Is that mine? Oh yes, magnetic mine. Oh shit. Well, so much for your work. Yeah, you are. Nope, they're out. They're, they're there to stay now. Oh my god. You're just walking straight into that, huh? I recognize your footsteps. There you go. Oh man. Mm -hmm. There you go. You young pup! That's gotta be such a relief. Right? I was able to negotiate a trip back home for the survivors. Why'd you stay? Mm. Got nothing left to live for, why not? Yeah. Paul Muad'Dib. I've heard many stories about Muad'Dib. None of them pretty. Didn't know it was you, I bet, huh? That's a lot of water. <laughs> Johnny. Look at him, he's hopeless. He's family. He's not a walking canteen. <laughs> <laughs> Give old Gurney a break, man. Even you, even Paul struggled. <laughs> If you don't want to raise an army in the South, you may still have an option. I know where your father hid the family atomics. Oh. The family atomics. I could aim the bombs at the main spice fields. He who can destroy a thing has the real control of it. You promised me you didn't want power. No matter what I do, you still won't trust me. Because you're a foreigner. Like your friend. <laughs> you do what you have to to stop their opponents. We're not talking about actually destroying it. We're talking about holding Great it enemy. hostage. Yeah. Your great-great-grandfather's legacy. The 92 original Atreides family's atomic warheads. Oh, my mm. God. That is power. Yes, yes, it is. It's all about power perceived now. Mm -hmm. Now you are on the same level as them. He's Kifta Chaya and Sagasa. Uh, I'm sorry, fam. That just freaks me out. It's weird. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that thing just constricted him. Uh, water's poisonous to him. That's interesting. Thus you have it. The water of life. It's kind of a ironic name for the thing. Water of life that comes from death, yeah. And causes death. Soon a man is going to visit your temple and he may want you to perform the rites. The mother thought it deep. Let him try! Mm -hmm. Was the voice always that weird? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really hear it in the books. <laughs> Johnny! Johnny! They're bombing Siege Tibler. All that water. I want to go on the ground. I would recommend you stay inside those. Bring his body to my go. quarters. My poor darlings are hungry. That's sadistic. Like, you think people would learn to quit asking them questions after like, the 20th person they've killed? I think they're just doing their jobs, but he doesn't care. What are you doing here? Kiss my feet. <laughs> Kiss. Or die. Humiliation for you. What do you do? They fade all your bases. You need to drink the water of life. And you will see everything. Yes, understand your visions. Yeah, then you'll be an actual super being. I don't like it, but. <laughs> if I go south, I might lose you. You will never lose me. Not as long as you stay who you are. And then I will do what must be done. But. Johnny, that's the point. <laughs> he won't be able to. Kind of like in Game of Thrones. The guy said, kill the boy, Jon Snow, and let the man be born. Mm. Oh, man. No respect for the Fremen. Just no respect for life. You kill nine of my men with one single blade. Not bad. She won't talk. I already know everything I need to know. Only pleasure remains. Oh, no. It's no way for a warrior to die. 
Look at all the damn worms. You gotta move a lot of people. He just drank that damn water. I hope your mom taught you how to transmutate. Look at that. An ocean on Arrakis. Right there beside the dunes. Everything has a beginning. My dearest brother, you are not prepared for what is to come. Well, there's Anya Choi Taylor. Now learn the truth about our family. Don't worry. I love you. And she's just openly crying because there's abundance of water. What did you do to him? Easy, Chani. You don't want to mess with her. His body is fighting the poison and he needs your help. You do it. You did this to him. Fix it yourself. Do it. You use that voice a little too much. You're taking away people's free will way too often. Her name is Desert Spring. It is, isn't it? Now it's the water of life. Right. Well, that worked instantly, didn't it? Sleeper has awakened. Are you okay? Yes. Thanks to you. <coughs> Didn't have much choice. <laughs> right. And your mom has gone completely psychotic <laughs> in, like, no time. It's an incredible character arc of hers. It really is. I'm sorry about Johnny. She'll come to understand. I've seen it. Wow. Our enemies are all around us. But I do see a way. There is a narrow way through. Mm hmm I saw our bloodline, Mother, written across time. <laughs> you are the daughter of Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. Oh, my God. Oh, no. We're Harkonnens. So this is how we'll survive. By being Harkonnens. This is a family feud now. <laughs> Good lord, Paul, get over yourself. <laughs> well, there's an entrance for you. There's always so many of them out there, too. I know. I like the shot. There are mm -hmm. a lot of great shots in this movie. Oh, yeah. Still, Carl, you can stop this. Do you hear me? You have the power to stop this. You're not allowed to speak inside the circle. I think we're beyond words at this point. Yeah. This prophecy is how they enslave us! How they dominate! This is none of your business. Raban Harkonnen himself killed my family. He gave me this scar to remember him by. He wants revenge even if you oh, don't. It's been personal for a long time for that man. Mighty, mighty. Only tribe leaders can speak. Take my life, Uzul. It is the only way. I'm pointing the way! Jesus, he's gotten very scary. Mm-hmm. Zulfa beat Nair Gevi Bar. He sees a lot. Mm-hmm. I'll see Jura Abzir see he secured to family. Dune. Dune. You saw that game? That's a long time ago, too. I am Paul Mwadib Atreides, Duke of Arrakis! Demon Aruk Did he just control everybody with the voice? It kind of sounded like it. Yeah. Tell you what, his voice has gotten real deep here lately. Yeah, it does. I'll tell you what, you've got a loud voice if he's reading a direct letter from you. Did you counsel my father to exterminate the Atreides? Of course I did. Why else would it have happened? They were promising, but they were becoming dangerously defiant. Anybody you can't control, huh? But there is one way your family can remain in power. Are you prepared? You've been preparing me my whole life, Reverend Mother. She's about to find out, too. Mm-hmm. He cut his finger off to Satisfy as the, the price as the price he had to pay to keep his life for this. Yeah. My goodness. Fam, I'm not gonna get over the CGI here. It's incredible. Send messages to the great houses. Tell them that Arrakis is under Sardaukar attack. You can betray the Emperor already, huh? Moves and counter moves, you know? Yeah. A lot of politics going on. Oh here. yeah. Look at all the Sardaukar. Good lord, you are pompous as hell. <laughs> I don't remember the Baron having these 
balls floating around with him last in the first part. I don't either. Floating colostomy bag or something. I don't know. Maybe it's related to the poisoning he took. Maybe. Do you have any idea who this poor dude could be? <laughs> Sorry, his accent. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's a madman. Mad? All Fremen are mad. Uninhabited South exhibits evidence of human activity. I swear to you, I wasn't aware of any of this. Go ahead and kill him. I don't care. Yeah, I was not going to hurt my feelings. Look at all the thunder, man. They're bringing all the worms. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he got his own army there, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. I don't Launched the atomics. Oh, that'll get their attention. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. That's how you fight Cybercar. You idiots didn't see this coming? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't fighting. We're gulping. Woo -hoo! <laughs> Now that's a shot. What are you gonna do? Stab it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Jesus. There's nothing you can do. I love it! Oh my god. They don't have an answer. Mm -mm. They don't know what to do. There goes the Beta King. Oh my god! Took a long time to get here, but here we are. There you go, Chani. You guys are at their mercy. smart you won't do that you stay back <laughs> what do you say about it now emperor <laughs> those were your elites yeah fade's loving it <laughs> he's going right for you baron he killed his father prepared to die <laughs> grandfather oh. imagine saying that <laughs> and then running one through mm. yes i'm sure there's no love there what the He's a scary person now. <laughs> yeah, the Harkonnens were right to fear the Atreides here. The Atreides are better fighters. Yeah. Here we go. Oh my god. Too easy. For my duke and my friends. No blood? I would have preferred to see some blood come out of this guy. Right. Warships. The great houses. Oh, it was them breaking yeah. orbit. Okay. I want you to know I will love you as long as I breathe. Hmm. You're facing a full invasion, Fremen. If the great houses attack, our atomics will obliterate all spice fields. Consider what you're about to do, Paul Atreides. Silence! Woo! <laughs> Get her! Take that, old lady. I'll take the hand of your daughter. She will remain safe, and we will rule together over the Empire. Do you know why they killed him? Your father was a weak man. You killed his house because you thought he was threatening your power. Yeah. Who's weak? You're the one who's afraid. Stand, or choose your champion. I'm here, Atreides. I need a blade. Except mine. We always knew that was gonna happen. And you're gonna die with a fancy blade in your hand. Hmm. I'm happy to finally meet you, cousin. Cousin? Well, you wouldn't be the first relative I've killed. Damn. <laughs> That's true. That's no surprise. <laughs> They're both fast. Here we go. Come on. He's, they're both good. It's a close fight. She's your pet. Stay focused. Yep. Stay focused. Don't let him get in your head. Ooh. Oh, 
no. Oh. I hope you got a good grip on that. <laughs> got him too. There you go. You fuck well, I tried it. Better than you. Just barely. Listen, I gave! Jesus. We couldn't wait to say that. No, he couldn't. Always gotta give the propaganda first. Yep. You chose the wrong side. There are no sides, Reverend Mother. And yet you still lost. I think the Bene Gesserit believe in sides. They believe in their side. Mm hmm Spare my father now and I will be your willing bride. The throne will be yours. Oh my god. <laughs> Incredible. He doesn't have long to live anyways, so... Humiliations galore. There is some respect. What you feared most has come to pass. By your own hands. Okay. Johnny's not supposed to be upset. I think it's had you deny him after all this. There is a storyline playing out here, but still. We refuse to honor your ascendancy. We await your orders. Is that not good? Are they foolish? I guess they won't lose this bias. Okay. Lead them to paradise. They just started a holy war. Oh no. Oh my god. Billions are going to die. Billions will die for real. They're gonna cleanse planets. What is happening, Mother? The holy war begins. It's on now. It's a foolish thing to do. They control all the spice. <laughs> I'll feel bad for a moment for Chani, but he did say she'd come to understand. You gotta understand the politics at play here. There it is. Ooh. Very well done. Thank you. Very well done, yes. Loved every second of it. So you remember when I told you meditate on this, I will? Mm hmm Concerning his vision about people that, were, uh, that he saw starving there? I think I have a... An interesting theory about that, because we just saw here at the end, the other great houses refused to accept his ascendancy there. Mm -hmm. I have a theory that people aren't starving from the lack of food. Paul and his uh, Fremen are in control of Arrakis now. Right. They're in control of spice. Right. And billions of people consume spice to prolong their lives and give them metaphysical abilities. Right, because I think you said something before about how it's essential to basically the economy of the universe just about but once you start consuming it you can't stop otherwise you know you start to go into violent withdrawals that eventually kill you mm -hmm. i think that's what people are starving from is a lack of spice is what he's seeing in that vision so that makes sense because in the course of this film we didn't see like an incident where they had like a lack of a shortage of food or a shortage of water or anything yeah so i guess that kind of makes sense because at the end of the day the only thing people are deprived of is the spice because now he controls it yes yeah yeah, so if they're too busy fighting and no spice is being produced, mm -hmm. then they're, then millions of people will just die from that. Okay. So. Well, the thing is, too, you could also mention, because you said the Holy War was starting there, a war is going to usually have negative effects on your agriculture. Oh, certainly. People will probably still starve anyway. Yeah, I mean, I imagine if the Fremen show up and they wipe out whole civilizations, like you say, that's going to affect some people. Yeah. The Holy War here... I, Granted, I haven't read the next book, but I have seen some videos on it, mm -hmm. on how the story goes. This makes anything Hitler or or Genghis Khan did look like child's play. Mm. You know, humanity spread out across the known universe, and there's such a humongous population of them now yeah. that the idea of numbers like that dying off is insane. All in the name of you trying to bring forth one type of belief. So I can see why he was hesitant to actually go through with it then, because you realize what you're unleashing on the universe. Yeah. The Harkonnens weren't giving you much chance, choice then. Right. Either. They've, they've just they bombed you out of your out of your places, mm -hmm. small-minded to the big picture here, because they have no idea what's really going on here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like you're you're kind of ignorant to what, to what he's seeing is actually going to happen, but your choices led you to a path that there's no going back from now. So. Well... I kind of thought the whole thing of him, you know, not wanting to go through with the war was ignorant. Because, you know, you have to realize the Harkonnens aren't just going to leave you alone. Eventually they're going to keep sending forces at you and forces at you and forces at you. 
and if and if you defeat them, someone else is gonna take over the planet. They're gonna do the same thing until eventually they get you. Yeah. So like, if you want a peaceful life with your friend and allies, the only way you were going to do that was by stopping your enemies. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, and it, yes, it's terrible what you end up having to do, but you know, it's basically you or them. In the end, I don't know that it was necessary to send your forces out to go cleanse the cleanse the universe of non-believers. Mm -hmm. It's like you control the spice. You can just tell them. Our number one, our atomics are still pointed at the fields. Right. And number two, we have your emperor here. Back off and go home, or we nuke this planet. Right. And you all die. You know. So clearly, he must have seen something else in his vision that made him think that was the way. Because he talked about like that one path. Like there's one way where this works out just fine for us. Otherwise, our enemies win. But I mean, if it's a narrow path, it had to be a narrow path to getting to making the emperor bow to your, bow at your feet. Not, it couldn't have possibly meant. We had to keep going. God, at least I hope it didn't. Because I haven't read the book beyond this. I don't know. I was going to say, who, who can say? Because we don't know what his full vision is. Only he does. Yeah. He's got all that centuries of knowledge. We can't see that in a two-hour film. Fair enough. Then I will say, Chani is not supposed to be upset here. She's actually the one mm -hmm. who suggested to Paul that he does what he does there and take that and take uh, Princess Irulan as his bride. Right. She suggested shouldn't be upset here. This is bothering me. I mean, I can kind of see why she's upset. Her whole thing was, you know, she didn't want Paul to change. She liked him as the nice guy that he was. Yep. And then clearly he became something else altogether. The and Paul the Paul that she wanted died when he drank the poison, the, the water she, of blood. He didn't want to get involved in the politics of it all. And unfortunately, you know, he, what he did was a political move that kind of makes her an outsider in the relationship. I can see why she's mad about it, but I can I also believe what you're saying too. Like, she really shouldn't be. He's doing what's necessary for the greater good here. Yeah, it's like... Take a bride for politics, and then you two can actually be married for love, you know? And, and, you know, that's a common historical thing. You know, you marry into royalty, and then you have your concubines or whatever else off to the side that you love just as much, you know? Yeah. Moves and counter moves, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's, isn't that incredible? It's like, how powerful do you really think you are that you actually have to make this step still? Mm -hmm. It's like, you still have to take her as your bride. It's yeah. like, you're not as powerful as you still think you are, you right. know? You're still bound to do that. Mm hmm because there are other forces at play here. So it's like, yeah, you granted not all the houses will be wiped out, but, and you know, not certainly not all the planets, but a shitload of them yeah. will be. So, I mean, I guess the herd going as bride there will probably save, li save lives in the long run if you start to think about it, I guess. Mm -hmm. But enough of that. Other than that, I, I enjoyed this movie very much. Uh, the visuals of it were beyond anything you could, you could have ever asked for. It was really good CG. I'll, I'll give them that. Definitely. No, Storyline, my favorite part was Jessica's character arc. Mine too, actually. She was incredible. That, that's one of the things I really appreciated about this film was just how the characters developed. Because the first movie, you know, the first movie was pretty good, but it was pretty straightforward, just kind of setting things up. In this one, you really see how the characters change through the course of the film. Yeah. Because, you know, we're looking at Stilgar, Stilgar... Even he had a big character. Yeah, because when we see him at first, he seems like, you know, he's the wise, experienced Fremen leader out there who everyone turns to for knowledge. And then in the end, he's a fundamentalist just like everybody else. He's out there crying, you know, Lisan al Gaib and going out to kill people, even willing to sacrifice his own life needlessly yeah. for, for his belief. And it's like, wow, you're not actually not as wise as you portrays yourself at first no i mean it's like but that's what happens when you have blind devotion yeah i think it's like you're wearing basically wisdom as a as a mask mm -hmm. and you're wearing it over what the real thing is and that's just a devout fundamentalist so. and, and of course talking about lady jessica like you said yeah i really like her transformation there too because she goes from being you know just a caring mother who's trying to do what she can to help her, her and her son survive to just a full-on propagandist yeah you, you see her you know, scheming there with her, her unborn daughter. That was <laughs> creepy as hell. It was, it was yeah. the weirdest part of this film, I tell you. But it was interesting you know, seeing her put everything into motion and taking advantage of all those Bene Gesserit prophecies that had been put into place over the years. I mean, because in the books, I mean, the uh, she wasn't a fetus in the book. She, I mean, she was, but she was actually born early, prematurely, because Jessica took the water of life. Mm -hmm. She was born prematurely, and it actually made her age rapidly. Mm -hmm. So she was alive and actually captured by the Harkonnens when they when they bombed Siege to Blar there. So she should have been there for all of that. Right. The other thing that should have happened there, and I don't mind spoiling it now since you've watched the movie, mm -hmm. but Paul and Chani actually had children. 
before Siege to Blar was uh, was bombed. So, so they they had actually been in love for some time. So a lot more time should have passed than what we actually see yeah. in the movie. They had a couple of small children, and the Harkonnens went in there and killed their children. Mm. And that kind of messed them up a little bit, but it but it kind of paved the way for everything else there. Right. So we didn't really see that take place in this movie. I don't know how they could. That would have been a bit dark, i got to say. Well, not only dark, but I think it's like, how could you tell all that in just two hours, like you said, you know? I say this movie was almost three hours long. and Are you going to show seeing... Paul with a gray beard? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and speaking of Paul, and I also liked his character turn, too. Because, you know, seeing him, you know, as the young, naive prince of Arrakis, pretty much, you know, he's kind of an angsty teenager. He doesn't want to take responsibilities for anything. He just wants to, you know, kind of go out there and live his life. And then, you know, once he takes that water of life, he's a whole different person. I know. It's... Like, like seeing him walk into that you know, war leaders meeting gave me chills. Because he's just so much more confident and, yeah. and just commanding of things. Well, because in the beginning he was just going through prescience. But taking the water of life kind of like opened all the pathways in his head, I guess. Mm -hmm. And cleared the way for everything to come together. And now he can finally understand and interpret what's going on there. So it's kind of like... All the visions keep happening the same way, but they all have meaning now because you can see the past in all of them. Yeah. Right? As, as opposed to just futures. So mm -hmm. now you can see where everything's come from. It's like, okay, now I get it. You know? Yeah. I'm seeing multiple realities, and it's like I can actually control which one of them happens for us here. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where that's coming to. But could you imagine having visions like that all the time? It's like you don't, you, you it almost becomes to a point where what you're seeing with your own eyes in the present you can't interpret it from react from what's happening you wouldn't be able to believe it yeah yeah because it's like well i've been seeing all these visions i don't know any there has to come a point where it's like i don't know anymore mm -hmm. what's re what's actually happening in front of me and what's a vision you know yeah i can see that that could be an issue and even just like we said it seemed like every time he had a vision it was nightmarish it's like how do you live with yourself dealing with that night after night i don't know man i have no clue it's like God, you just want to not see that anymore, you know? Right. The other thing I really appreciate about this film was the poli was the political aspect of it. Mm, smart politics at play. It was really smart politics here because you've got the Bene Gesserit who are working behind the scenes. They're controlling what the Emperor does. They're controlling what the other houses do to either work for or against the Emperor as they see fit. You know, we talked about Lady Jessica. They're going out and they're spreading all the propaganda about about her son. And, you know, it kind of raises the question, you know, is he really Lisan al Ghaib? Because if you look at a lot of the prophecy, a lot of this is stuff that's not really supernatural. Like they sit there and say, you know, he'll know your ways before he, you know, like like he was born to him. Yeah. But he he himself said he looked at film books. He knows all about Arrakis before he even arrived to the planet. You know, that's information that anybody could have access to. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's like because the Bene Gesserit had been at work there for a long time. I mean, even even their uh, Reverend Mother for the uh, for the Fremen mm -hmm. is Bene Gesserit. Yes, you know, so it's like you've been there stoking or laying foundation. Yeah, it's like you're and you've done all you could up to that point. Now here's Lady Jessica to get you the rest of the way. And, and that's the thing too, because you kind of look at what happened with Lady Jessica there when she took the Water of Life. Everyone's saying it was a miracle, and then even Paul tells them, "Well, no, it's not. They're trained to deal with that." Yeah. So it would stand to reason too that Paul, for the same reason, wouldn't have been killed by the Water of Life because he was had that Bene Gesserit training. You know, then they talk about. And then Stilgar went into damage maintenance mode there to mm -hmm. make sure it's like, oh no, we can't have like, we can't we can't have anything here of logic. It's like right. this, we need prophecy to win the day. So. Yeah. You know, and they talk about how yeah he knows your ways, but at the same time, we had, saw a whole montage there of Chani actually teaching him how to survive in the desert. So does he really know their ways that well? I mean, he's kind of just learning as he goes along. Well, and he didn't fully transmute the poison on his own. Right. You needed Chani's tears. I don't know what that had to play into it, mm -hmm. but there it is. It's like you, it's what, one little drop of her water helps? I'm not sure how. That part, I don't know how. So they don't really explain any of it, do they? No. But then you, know, you look at it too, when he shows up to the, the war leaders meeting and he's sitting there telling all these tribal leaders, you know, what their visions are of the future. Who's to say that his mother didn't give him that information behind the scenes before he walked in there? I'm sure. She she's can. been in the South for some time, gathering information, no doubt. She probably knows what these guys you know, feel and believe and knows about their families. Well, she's been using the voice like it's going out of style and everywhere that, she goes. She's like, tell me about yourself using the voice. Yeah. 
and it's like, all right, I want you to sit here when the time comes. Yeah. Stuff like that. You, so you can point them out. You're basically kind of forcing things to go the way that you want to, so you get that outcome of him being the Messiah. And the word, and the word that that is, is political theater. Mm -hmm. It's that's really what that is. So. Because realistically, if the only qualifications they have to be a man, they have to have accomplish these things, then any guy who had some Bene Gesserit training could walk in and do this. They didn't necessarily have to be Paul. Yeah. And I theorize that's part of why they wanted to, Paul to take this water of life, because it's like the Paul that you were mm -hmm. is is a uh, is a problem. He's a complication to the grand plan here. Right. Because Paul has been recognizing what Jessica has been doing. He's mm -hmm. like, she's saying they had you know. We're building hope and he's saying that's not hope what you're doing there that's just propaganda yeah or like even in the first movie he's, she's talking about how these people have been waiting for the messiah and he said no nah, they've been they've been told what to see yeah you know it's like you've been you've been stoking these things and fanning the fires for a long time and it's like yeah this paul needs to go and that makes her transformation even more disturbing because it's like you're willing to literally kill your own son it, yeah it's no longer about protecting your son it's about protecting the, whatever she the believes in. Al -Gaib. yeah because you because you tried to even the reverend mother called her out on it. you tried to bring it out yourself mm -hmm. and it's like well yeah she's still trying to and she actually succeeded yeah and the reverend mother's sitting there like unbelievable <laughs> it's like it's like what kind of monster are you you know right at lady joe who, who the hell are you you know as much as we think the Bene Gesserit are questionable individuals his mother's not any better. It's like, wow, I thought you loved the Duke. And yeah. you gave him a son here. You you did you did this all for yourself, literally. Yeah. And, and, it, and it kind of puts a different spin on Paul's character, too, because, you know, we think of him as this great leader, as the Lisan al-Gaib, but really he's just a slave to the universe. He is, yeah. I mean, he's still going to have to be. Yeah. No matter what. But they're also going to have to slave themselves to him because the spice must flow. Mm-hmm. Period, and if they—that's why I couldn't believe that the great houses weren't accepting the court, the ascendancy there. It's like, no, if you want to survive, you better do it. The spice must flow. Yeah, that sets up another movie. So. I say it doesn't make any sense, but it's a heck of a cliffhanger ending that you're starting a holy war. <laughs> you might walk into it, and it's already over. Right. But that'll be interesting to see where things go from here. We do know there's another movie coming, so yeah. Whether they break that one up into two parts or not, I don't know. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm here for it. Yeah. Yeah, we've covered a lot of, a lot of topics here, fam. I think we're going to leave the rest up to you guys. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on any of that from the books, guys. It's been a while since I read them. And try to fill in some gaps for me, too, guys. Some of you guys are actually really well-versed in this. so. And I haven't read the books at all, so I don't know what. Yeah. I like our theories. I think they're fun. I think they're going to work out in the end there. Uh, of course, I've been wrong before. But I really hope I'm not because I hope that the reason people are starving is because that they are going through spice withdrawals. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I'm still pissed that we have not seen one goddamn space guild navigator. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, you were mad about that the first time around. It's, they got to show them at some point, right? Their politics are damn important, too. They cannot do anything without spice. Mm. The universe cannot function without them. So they kind of need it. Uh, so it would be nice to see what a third stage guild navigator looks like in Denis Villeneuve's visions there. So I hope we see that at some point because we can't be we can't be denied this forever. So Maybe in the next film. We'll see. I have how they would do it. I don't know, but I think we're gonna leave it there, fam. Tell me if you're pissed about that too, guys. As much as I am. I just thought it was a great film. Yes. Oh yes, and Fade Rautha was uh, was scary and sadistic. So. Yeah, sure. And his little weird little creature children there <laughs> that were eating, like, human flesh and body parts. <laughs> Just how carnies in general are weird. Hopefully they killed them uh, first. <laughs> you can't keep pets like that. Yes. So, yeah. Very true. But as always, fam, if you're brand new to this channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a new one. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments. Also, if you feel like supporting us, please help join, and you can go and vote on some polls for upcoming movies, guys. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. See what we're up to over there, guys. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Long live the fighters.